Hello and welcome back. If you are here, it means you probably just watched my Exodus video tutorial walking through the first turn of Exodus. But I'm sure most of you are interested to see what happens for the rest of the game. Uh, and if that's the case, that's why you're here to watch. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to finish this game, kind of give you a little bit of commentary as I play so you can see uh, some of the insights about what goes on in gameplay um, and introduce any of the more advanced topics that show up. Uh, this is going to involve player battles. This, uh, I'll see if I can uh, get some missiles to show you all how the WMDs work as well. I, uh, the WMD animation is one of my favorite in the game. So moving on to politics, uh, we get the chance to pick between supplies, which in reverse turn order, so that Chancellor chooses last, each player receives a ship upgrade of their choice, whether or not they've researched it. We can make mining reactions cost one less population, or we can reduce the cost of any cannon. Now, I am really low on CP because I have three planets that are giving me things that are not CP, and only one planet that's giving me CP, so I'm probably going to need uh, some help here, um, meaning I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go for some supplies. So, uh, I don't have the CP to spare, we're just going to vote nothing for it, but my vote still counts. So, looks like green also voted for supplies, Ooh, and red voted 2 CP for increased firepower. That is not the end of the world, as we can uh, install some free cannons onto our ships. So, uh, bonus proposal. Let's go ahead and propose buy upgrades as the bonus. Uh, we'll also do build ships. These are two things that I would want to do this turn. Alright, so this is going to allow us to get those cannons for free. Now, my thought about where I'm headed here is that I'm going to need to grab one of these CP planets, but in order to do that, I'm going to have to weaken, uh, or I'm going to have to be able to take down that Centaurian resistance, that level 2 resistance, which is uh, a bit stronger than the opponent we just took out. So, with my two Axidium here, I'm going to try to go ahead and grab a pair of fighters. They're really going to help me um, increase the amount of firepower that my fleet has. So, we don't have enough funds for that. Um, I can I do one of two things. I can either bank or I can sell my Phasium. My Phasium would sell and give me 5 CP, which might be the best option here, assuming Blackwater does not trade first. As we trade, uh, the person in the market goes up. That little gray box between the two market pieces allows you, or shows you who's taken um, what phase in the market. Um, but all, it looks like if I'm, I'm actually guaranteed to get 5 CP for selling my Phasium, so I think I'm going to go ahead and do that. But first, we must go to the elections part of the council stage. Again, I have no cash, so I have to get bullied by my opponents. It's going to put me down at the bottom of the pecking order, um, which is really unfortunate, but it is what it is. So, let's trade. Click on this button. Here we go. It looks like I'm going to be the first one to trade this turn. So, red has researched EMG shields, green went ahead and bought a bunch of upgrades, um, and I am going to go ahead and sell this Phasium for 5 CP. Now it's as I said earlier in the game, research or resource management is really important, and because I'm really low on funds, I think I'm going to go ahead and trade one of these population in to build ships now, so that I can do a banking uh, uh, a banking action next action turn. Um, this way I don't have to spend my turn on building ships. So we're going to grab a, a pair of fighters. Uh, brings me down to 2 CP. I'm going to want to install some shields on them because they're expensive. I don't want them to get blown up. But we'll also take a Dark Raider here and just bump up this fleet size. I'm down to nothing, but that's cool. I planned for it because we're going to bank. move through those animations. I'm going to go ahead and leave this population. I don't need to research anything right now. We're going to skip that. Go through the animations of seeing what everybody else has playing. Now, we move to by upgrades phase and the basic cannon costs zero now because of the increased firepower resolution. Now one thing I didn't mention last, or uh, in the tutorial, was that there's three different types of political decisions you can make. 
The first is the law, which stays into effect for the whole game until another effect removes it. The second is uh, resolution, which lasts only for the turn. And then the third is called an executive decision, and it just resolves immediately. Uh, the supplies option that I chose for my vote was an executive decision, which would have just done the action on the card and then gone away. So this is my one turn to take advantage of increased firepower. We're going to go ahead and drag some cannons into all of our empty cannon slots on our ships here. Might as well take all that free firepower while we can. I'm also going to drag this EMG shield over to my fighter. Now I've got enough to purchase one for my war cruiser, but I think it's a few turns out before I'm actually using the war cruiser. And if all goes well, I can get better shields by then. So we're going to just go ahead and save this 2 CP for next turn. I'm going to need it. Alright, WMD stage gets passed. Moving on to Conquest. You notice that we skipped the Shuffle Upgrades action this time because the bonus action was Buy Upgrades. This is just something to make the game go a little faster uh, and not cause us uh, to see redundant screens. So, now that we're here, we can see my carrier on Nerthus still has a population in it. And we're going to try to plop this population down on one of these two planets. Uh, so let's take a second to examine the board to see where we want to go. This player, green, is closer, but this guy has a fighter. Um, so it's probably going to be better for us to actually, let's see, probably better for us to come to Apeku uh, because there are fewer shields on these guys if they do try to fight us. We'll let Green try to take care of his own uh, level 2 resistance. But notice, I've got population on Terra Nova that is just sitting there. I can't pick that up unless I bring some ships over that are capable of moving population, which are carriers, battle carriers, and war cruisers. Um, I will mount no population, but we're going to go ahead and take this empty carrier, the one with no population, and we're going to move it back home. That's going to need to be there for next turn so I can pick up population and put them on other planets. Uh, now... We see the icon moves, but the only ships that are on Terra Nova before the move are still given in the hover over tooltip. I gotta move these over towards Apeku so we can take it down. And these last two ships are gonna move here. So I got a nice little fleet, five ships that are gonna come take down this level two Centaurian resistance. So it looks like Red's made a move on the level one Centaurian resistance and they have mutually destroyed each other. If at any point in the game, a player and a Centaurian resistance both blow up at the same time, the reward is not given to the player, but the Centaurian resistance is removed from the board. The idea there is there's no ship to pick up what the Centaurians dropped. It's lost forever. So it looks like Green has made a bit of a better choice to come after the resistance uh, level one with uh, a stronger fleet and it pays off they've destroyed the resistance and they got a reward that gives seven cp or one victory point that's pretty powerful this early in the game uh now we move on to deploy population i do not want to deploy population because i'm saving it for apeku so we're just going to skip this green took this planet here I'm going to skip mounting population, there's no need to do it, and I'm just going to move all of these ships over to Apeku. Notice how it's very easy to just click the planet and click its target, and the whole fleet moves because that is our intention. Now let's go! Take this resistance down! So, oh, I'm lucky. I got a pretty weak resistance. Only two cannons and two shields to my nine cannons and seven shields. We should be able to handle this chump. And only one hit, so we're going to go ahead and give that hit there and see what the Centaurians are managed to do. They hit our fighter. And we got enough to take him down. I hope you would with all that firepower, huh? Awesome. So, uh, we've got a card to give us two Axinium or two Phasium or two VP. Also pretty powerful earlier in the game. We're going to go ahead and deploy this population. All right. So I think that I'm going to save this for just a minute. I don't think I need it now, as we're not going to make any big buys this turn. I need more CP in order to do that. And in order to get more CP, we're going to have to move over to this planet here, or we're going to have to come take some of these up here. So it looks like we're going to need some better engines to get us there. 
Um, let's see. Research reactions do not cost any population. Players do not pay tax during their next upkeep stage. And ships are not allowed to move through or stop in the High Council Hex. I think that tax, tax exemption matters the most for me. That will save me 3 CP next turn, as I've got 3 planets that um, are mining and I have to pay tax on. Probably brings up a good question though. What is tax? Whenever you mine a planet that doesn't give you CP, you must pay 1 CP per resource that you receive. So right now it's costing me 3 CP at the beginning of every single turn to collect these resources, which is why my CP count has not been increasing as much as the rest. Otherwise, I get 5 CP every turn for my CP planets, and you can uh, do the math to keep track of what's going on. So, we're going to go attack exemption, but again, I don't have much money to, to leverage here, so I'm just going to vote for it. Looks like research support got the win. The bonus action proposal goes ahead, and we've got research as the bonus action. So, that means if I'm going to want to get... Some engines onto my ship, some some better engines. What I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to both research them and I'm going to have to buy the upgrades before we move on to the bonus action. So this is not actually going to help me with my plan for this turn. Um, but I've got, I'm not buying ships, so I can sell my Axinium as well, um, which will give me the same opportunity that I had last time Uh to trade and move forward but we can do both actions at the same time we're going to research and we're going to trade right off the bat so here we go with our research action looks like we got some hypersonic missiles bought by green improved shields bought by red and for me sure we can go ahead and redeem this now that way i can sell more and get more money when my trade action and we're going to buy these fusion drives. Now, what do the fusion drives do? Well, you can see that I can put them on my ship. And my ship moves up to two hexes. The number of engines on the icon shows you how far they can move. And if you can click on my player tab, we can see that right now I've only got basic engines. I can only move one hex per turn. So this is going to allow me to move two hexes per turn, increase my speed, really help me get around the board. So we're going to go ahead and research that. And move on to the bonus action or the re the reactions. I'm gonna once again spend one of my population to react with trading, and I'm the first one into the market and have a lot of axinium I'm not gonna use, so we're gonna sell it all. Look at that bank day! Woohoo! Now I just bought those engines. I need to put them on my ships. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and choose the buy upgrades action. Here comes an engine on my battle carrier, my dark raider, and my fighter. And I might as well put it on my war cruiser while I'm here. I probably won't get the level 3 engines uh, this game, so it's probably safe to put it on. I don't think I need them because this board is much smaller than uh, some of the bigger boards get in the game. So, engines for everybody. Ooh, looks like the free action reaction made it all the way to me. So, we're going to go ahead and select that. And let's see, what do we want to pick up? Uh, landing maneuvers can be kind of good. This allows us to uh, not have to worry about debris around a planet that we want to take. But... I don't think that's what I want to get right now. I think I'm going to need some... Uh, let's go with some basic repairs. Let's remove damage from my ships. You can see right now that one of my fighters has a damage on it at the beginning of my turn. That can go away with basic repairs. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and select that for now. And here comes the bonus action, which is also research, so we're going to thankfully be able to research again. Uh, let's increase our firepower. I've got a bunch of phasium saved up. I'm going to get more phasium next turn, so we're going to go ahead and get these SSL cannons. All right, we are, we are starting to get some teeth here. So, uh, Terra Nova, because we have our battle carrier there, I can take these two population this time, and the... Battle carrier that is on Apeku. I do not want to take population. I want to leave it so that my um, 
I can get the resources from this planet later. So we're going to go ahead and click check there. I'm going to move everything from this, except for one Dark Raider, over to the High Council Hex. Mm, no, I changed my mind. I'm going to go on a little bit of defensive for my borders here. So I don't want this battle carrier to come on and try to swoop my planet. So I'm going to send everything but one Dark Raider over here so that when they try to move here, I can take them down. And it still puts me in position to go to Poseidon next turn. Uh, I'll leave the one Dark Raider here to block this guy. Uh, we're pretty evenly matched, but it should at least be a deterrent. And then finally, this battle carrier can move up here with this fleet uh, to just add a little more firepower to our defense. So, you can see our defense paid off. He tried to swoop in with his battle carrier, but we are going to take him down. There is no way he can stand firepower on my fleet. And here we come. Just one hit in that. Oh no. And there's the other two we need. Here's the big explosion of the battle carrier. And there that falls to the planet below. Awesome. So, PvP battles are not worth anything except for victory points, but these victory points can't go away. So for destroying his battle carrier, I got two victory points for the end of the game. This is reflected on my player tab. Uh, in battle victories, once I push the check mark here, you can see it populates. So, we got a conflict at the High Council between the red and green player, and red, uh, green has won, gets the victory points, and here we are over Nerthus. We're not going to deploy population because we don't need to. Mm. So thankfully, there is no way for Red to take my planet now. He got his battle carrier blown up, and so this little fighter here is kind of helpless. He's not going to do anything. So we're going to go ahead and take this uh, after we move on from the deployed population. We're going to take this here. Um, we're going to take our empty battle carrier and move it home to pick up more ships next turn. And we're going to move our fighter fleet over to this level 2 resistance here. So yeah, he moved his fighter onto our planet, but it's not a big deal. Ooh, once again, we got a mediocre power out of our Centaurian. See the level 2 ship flying away. And we take him down. Boom! Nice little explosion, and he gets his final turn, but another strong reward. This game's looking pretty good for us. All right, we have passed the halfway mark. We are now to turn four of seven. And let's get started by getting some, getting some goodies. On to the political decision. Now, I want to make note that my basic uh, repairs has repaired the damage that was on my fighter. Uh, now it has two hit points instead of just one, like it did before, which is, which is awesome for us. Um, ooh, dictatorship is an option, though. All players must return all their phasium to the bank. Hopefully green won't pick this because green has a lot of phasium, but I certainly do not want this one. So what we're going to do is have to put a bit of money into a different option here to overcome our opponents. We're going to go ahead and bid five for transport tech uh, and hope that dictatorship isn't chosen. Uh, so it looks like the other player, uh, Red, went ahead for expanding the empire anyway, but we win our transport tech decision. This is just going to help us with some research as the research bonus action is selected. Now, I can go ahead and make a bid for Chancellor this turn. I've got some money to spare, but I get outbid pretty severely by my opponents. All good. So we gotta decide what we wanna do this turn. I think that some more upgrades are in our future, uh, but trading has been pretty powerful for me. So we're gonna go ahead and select this research option here to research some upgrades. We're gonna trade away all of our uh, Axinium, and then we're going to go ahead and buy some of those upgrades. So I think upgrading our shields is pretty strong. Um, we can go with QGP. They are very expensive to, to install, but 
really it gives three shields less three more hp for all of our ships um the mpg shields are much cheaper pretty economical but the way that this game is shaking out i think we're gonna be able to afford qgp shields moving forward so there we go getting the papa of shields And we go ahead and take our reaction here to sell. We're going to go ahead and sell all of this Axinium and bump ourselves back up to 20 CP. Notice now that the market is filling up. There's only one more spot to do trading um, as Green picked the first one and I got the second one. So now that we've uh, purchased enough money or we've sold enough Axinium to buy some upgrades, we're going to go ahead and do that. And look at this, these QGB shields cost 5 CP and 1 Phasium. Um, this is what I was talking about before, I just replaced a shield, so that shield shows up my upgrade bay, I can drag it on to another ship. Uh, we're going to want to get some more firepower on this fleet, so I'm going to go ahead and protect my fighter with a QGP shield, and I'm going to give him an SSL cannon, but I'm also going to give an SSL cannon to my Dark Raider and my Battle Carrier, so that these guys hit harder, uh, this will really help me moving forward so seems good so here's an interesting uh scenario that we haven't seen happen yet Notice, my home world only has one population on it, so I'm unable to react to green and red players' action as they cost me two. So I get this little warning, this is not enough population. I also am un unable to take my own reaction as it was taken by red here. This is great out for reaction taken. This is one of the problems about being lowest on the totem pole for your position in the high council, is that uh you kind of get pushed around about what reactions you're allowed to take so we'll go ahead and pass we got another research phase coming up here and there's not a lot that we need to do uh except i'm going to go ahead and grab biochemical rockets i want to show off the the rockets interface here so we're going to go ahead and buy some rockets that uh, target population on other planets and see if we can lock our opponents out of the game. So, Terra Nova's got only one population. That's not terribly helpful for me right now. I also don't think I can really get anywhere uh, with that. Let's see here. So it's probably better to keep it home and we'll, we'll use it next turn. Uh, so instead what we're going to do is we're going to try to target this level 3 resistance here with my fleet. Remember, I've got the same fleet that I had last time, the same ships at least, but since I've gotten my upgrades, my ships have a lot more strength. The amount of hit points it's going to take to destroy it, my fighters has increased, and the amount of cannons that I have has increased pretty dramatically. So, we go ahead and move on, and we're going we're to go after this level five, or level 3 Centaurian Resistance. Um, and see what we get. So, we'll move on over to the planet. Let's zoom in here. This guy has five cannons and three shields. He's got he's gonna hit much harder than any of the opponents that we've seen so far. And to represent that, look at the big Papa Centaurian mothership coming in. So, we get uh, three hits across our fleet. He takes four to destroy, so he's gonna get uh, two chances to fire at us. Uh, oof, oof, four hits, ouch. And just pull, took down two of our Dark Raiders. That's okay. We're going to swing back and take him out. But he does get a chance to fire back. Thankfully, it's not four more hits. Otherwise, we've taken out one of our fighters. And we go ahead and take this guy down. And look, the anti-gravity drive, the three-move drive is given to us as a reward here. But that's definitely worth holding on to for the five BP at the end of the game. So we take our planet. Our poor Dark Raiders got blown up, but let's move on to turn five. Now, the amount of money available for collection on my planet is about to drop to zero on a few, so I'm going to have to take one of my actions this turn to mine the planets, increase the amount of money that I can get from them in the next couple turns, because if I don't, I will be out. I will not have access to them anymore. So, 
Um, Tyranny, this returns all Axinium. That does not sound fun for me. Uh, ceasefire. We could go without buying upgrades this turn. I think that's okay for me. Expert repairs would also be pretty good. So let's go ahead and we'll do a meager vote for expert repairs. See if we can get that dark, uh, that last damage taken off of that fighter. And there we go. Fully repaired. All right. Fighter goes from no one damage to no damage. Feels pretty good. So these guys bid a lot for the Chancellorship last turn. I don't know how much it matters to me, honestly. I think I'd prefer to sit back and just spend some money. So we're going to vote no. Kind of glad I did. I couldn't have beat seven. And start off with a research action. I'm going to want to go ahead and sell my, my Axinium and Biphasium at the same time so that I can do some more upgrading, which is the bonus action here. So in order to do that, I'm going to do the advanced trading option. Um, advanced trading is going to do two things for me. It's going to reduce the prices in the market um, that it costs to buy Phasium and Axidium. And it's also going to increase the amount of money I get for selling uh, Axidium and Phasium. But on top of that, I can buy and sell in the same trade action, whereas before I could only buy or sell. Uh, this is going to be really, really powerful for me. Oh boy. Oh boy, I just got blocked out of the market. So green. So now the market's full. I can't actually trade, which really, that's that's really not very fun for me. This is a big disadvantage for being on the, the bottom of the total pool, the high council senator here, instead of being the chancellor or the vice chancellor. Well, okay, changes our game plan. It's one of the uh, one of the things we have to be aware of in Exodus. Now our market's full, which means we can't trade, but we can still select the trade option because it has the build ships reaction. That doesn't do anything for us right now, so we're gonna go ahead and just mine. Uh, and I say just mine, but I'm gonna need to get the amount of resources available on these planets up. So here we come to the mining screen. We can see that right now Terra Nova is at 0 out of 5. I'm going to put that up to 1. I'm going to put that up to 1. I'm going to put it up to 1. And CP is, I think, my most valuable resource at the moment. So I'm going to bump that up to 2. Um, and go ahead and push check. The numbers have changed on these planets, showing how much, how many resources are available. And we'll go ahead and pass on to the bonus action. So sadly... My upgrades are all pretty high tech, which means that I need phasium for every single one of them. Um, so I only get to do one this turn, but that is okay. We're going to go ahead and buy this rocket. So notice when I drag the rocket out, it brings me to a view of the map. Um, I'm going to go ahead and slap this on Nerthus here. Um, as it is one of the ones that is further out, but it's also close enough to the rest of my planets to protect. Um, and we can see kind of where our targets are laid out on the board. Um, we can zoom or, or move around, just right click on the screen and drag to see the view uh, for the rest of our opponents. So uh, here we are on Nerthus. I think I'm going to aim for green this turn. I'm a little mad that green uh, blocks me out. So what we can do is take our WMD now that we are into the WMD stage and I have one I can click on it and it shows me the available targets on the board now it must be noted that you cannot target home worlds with rockets uh, it's a balancing issue it's uh, it's actually a very important thing that we don't do this however what I can do is I can target any of the colonies that we have in the game I can even target my own <clears throat> now, I might do this if an enemy has population on my own planet, then I can destroy it with my biochemical rocket here. But instead, I'm going to target this four uh, planet. In fact, I think I'm going to target this one because it's going to be harder for him to take back with the debris. And we're going to go ahead and fire. Now, this rocket is going to hit on a roll of three or higher, I believe. So it hits with a four, and to see damage, we dealt two damage to the planet. It removed this one population cube. Take that, green. All right. Now on to moving. So I gotta kinda make a game plan about what I wanna do. I think that I still have the firepower to take down one of these guys. 
although I'm not sure how much it's going to help me. So maybe we're going to come and try to take this planet that I just removed population from. So we're going to take all the population off of our battle, our, our home world and stick it onto our battle carrier there. And then we're going to go ahead and start to move in. So this is going to move here. I'm going to move all of my ships here to protect this battle carrier, which is headed home, because I can still move across to Ekeko. Uh, next turn, so we're gonna do some some maneuver in here. Uh, looks like that battle carrier is moving in to take the planet back, and he does, in fact. Uh, but that's okay. Next turn, we can target it again with our rockets and take out his population before we take out our own. So we're not mounting any. This battle carrier is going home, and these ships are coming here. Let's take him down. So everybody. I got one of three. Now, notice that the planet is contested. We can see the colors around the outside that denote which players are on the planet, but the planet is not controlled by any one player at the moment because there's only enough population so that we're tied. You can see one green cube and one blue cube. So the planet is still a neutral planet. The points don't go to anybody, but as soon as one player takes control of this planet, it will change its color to reflect which player owns it, and that is the player that is re rewarded the CP at the end of the game, or the VP at the end of the game. So, we'll go ahead and move on. We're going to get some population back, just like we do every turn. We're going to go ahead and do some mining, and get our resources. I've really done a much better job at expanding this game than my AI opponents have, uh, which is putting me in a much powerful, more powerful position than them right now. Ooh, strategic warfare. The cost of buying any rocket is reduced by one phasium. That means that my bio rockets will only cost me two phasium, and we can see a massive escalation in WMDs here. So we're gonna go ahead and vote for that. I want I really want that one to, to go through. And it doesn't look like we're gonna get it. Ooh, we are just by one. My four CP bid was was powerful. That was great. Okay. So trade is the bonus action. This is probably not going to do anybody good unless they are the Chancellor. So let's get the Chancellorship. And the red player did not choose me. If we come back over to our history, we can see that both Green and, and myself bid 5 CP for the Chancellor. But the Chancellor at the time gets to decide the tiebreaker and chose to put Green above me on the pecking order. Um, there is one caveat to this. In elections, the Chancellor cannot bid for himself, cannot vote for himself as a tie break. So the Chancellor always goes to the bottom of whatever he ties with. So let's get some rockets, shall we? Um, I'm also going to want to get some of my other upgrades in the meantime. So a trade action, I think, is in order here. We're also going to need to mine this game. So we're going to trade. We're going to sell this and buy this. Notice I could sell these two and buy these two this turn this time. Now you're probably asking yourself, wait a second, Tyler. Phasium doesn't cost any, uh, or excuse me, bio rockets don't cost any phasium this turn. Why are you buying phasium? That's because I need the phasium to purchase my big shields and my big guns. Um, so we're going to go ahead and add that to our um, actions this turn. Now, I'm a little peeved that he took my reaction of building ships. However, I do know that the reaction for uh, mining is to build ships, but we're going to need these upgrades. So I'm going to go ahead and spend my two population here to get some upgrades. And we're going to grab this and stick it on our Dark Raider. We're going to upgrade the firepower of our fighters. And then I'm going to go ahead and put some shields on my war cruiser. These guys are going to join the fight next turn. And then let's also add some more rockets to the board. I can add as many rockets as I want. It looks like I can afford rockets for all of my planets. So we're just going to go ahead and escalate this game and make it game over. So many rockets. I recommend when you play Exodus, you do not put this many rockets on the board as it will not be very fun for your opponents maximum firepower so notice that we come to the uh, second action and 
I don't have enough population on my home world to do any of these things. So it's giving me the clue that, hey, this turn, you're only going to be doing an action. You are not going to be reacting. Uh, we're going to go ahead and mine and push OK. Mining, we need to go up on Nerthus and Tewaz if we are going to get enough Axinium to build our war cruisers next turn. I definitely, definitely, definitely want some more Phasium. And then my last choice doesn't matter because t next turn is the last turn. And we'll pass and move on. Bonus action, trade. The trade happens. I'm going to get a chance to trade. We're going to buy some phase or some uh, some phasium. We're just going to go ahead and spend all that so that I can get fully decked out on my ships next turn. Yeah, here we go. We got some massive amount of rockets to fire. So we're going to take down this planet. We're going to take down this planet. I'm going to send one rocket here. I'm going to send the rest of them doesn't really matter, does it? At these various planets. So I'm only sending one rocket here because I want to destroy one population, not all of it, because my population is also there. It looks like we got green firing a rocket as well. Massive explosions! And I got the one green, but none of the blue. Uh, and destroyed the rest of the population all over the rest of the board. Ooh, but he took out all of my CP on this planet. That is really unfortunate. So we're going to go ahead and take this turn to collect some more CP planets. Um, there are, There's no population on here, so it doesn't do me much good. Uh, we might have a fight on our hands to take this guy down, though. Let's go ahead and steal this guy's rocket planet. Ooh, but he's headed back to ours. Mm. Not a chance. He does manage to get a shot off on our fighter, but that's okay because that fighter can recover that next turn. We'll just blow his population up again next turn. Uh, let's go ahead and take this uh, and move it to... Both of these are worth four. This one is worth more because it's got a resistance over it, so we're going to go ahead and take that one down. And there we go taking out the resistance. You see at the end of the game the resistance becomes a bit trivial um, once my fleet is strong enough to take it out. And we'll take that planet. And there we are. So, let's go ahead and collect our income and move to turn seven of seven. Now's a good time to check to see where we are at on the leaderboard. You can see since I eradicated my opponent's colonies last turn, their VP has dropped dramatically. I'm in a commanding position to win this game. Uh, and the, the points breakdown in the player tab will also reflect that. My planet control is huge, while their planet controls are close to nothing. So, we're going to go with defense resolution. It's going to make my expensive shields cost less. That's worth probably two to me. Looks like green wants the same option. Everybody's on board. So defense resolution it is. Let's get some cheap shields. That means we're going to need to buy some upgrades or build some ships this turn so that I can get the rest of my ships joining my fleet. Buy upgrades is the bonus action. Bid for Chancellor. Now this is where the bid for Chancellor matters in points. If you notice, the Chancellor is worth 5 VP at the end of the game, Vice Chancellor with 3, and High Council Senator is only worth 1. So whoever ends in the highest position here is going to uh, get a handful of points. I don't really care that much because I'm in such a lead. I prefer to spend my money on ships and upgrades. So let's go ahead and just click OK. Let them squabble out over who's at the top. Looks like Red's going for the boost in victory points. So bonus actions is uh, by upgrades. So we're going to start by building some ships. Uh, I can also pick trade here, but they've been snaking my reactions pretty hard. So I'm just going to go with the safe option to build some ships. And we're going to get the ships that we need to continue and take over the rest of this game. Build two war cruisers, and we might as well get our last two dark raiders to join the team. 
So we've got the full eight ships available for purchase in the game. Uh, next up, we need some more money to buy all these upgrades coming up. So I'm going to uh, go ahead and pick banking. I want to save my phasium because I'm going to need it for these upgrades. Uh, so we're just going to go ahead and get for more CP. Looks like we got passes all around on the bonus action. That seems responsible because we want to save our uh, population. And we're going to go ahead and install some of our big daddy shields here. And with my last three, I'm going to get these three ships. Look at that. That was a very, very nice uh, way to spend money. Zero, zero, zero. It doesn't happen very often. It's careful planning. That's what that is. And a little bit of luck. <laughs> so now's a good opportunity to kind of show off the board state. So what we're going to do is we're going to minimize this WMD tab here and minimize the map. Um, you can push the button M on your own computer or you can click the map button down here to minimize. You can see what the board looks like. We can see my two opponents here. I've got over to the left the female military officer and on the right I've got the cyborg player and I am here blue. This is the cadet, uh, just the male cadet. Uh, we're going to be expanding uh, the game in the future by adding skins and customizable player avatars so that you can appear around the table as you like. We also have emotes built into the game. I'm going to see if I can show you a couple of them right now. We have put your head down and shake, sadly. Slam the table because you're at, mad at your opponent. There is a clap for a good move. There is a cheer when something goes your way. And then the really excited cheer with two hands in the air. We're also going to be expanding the amount of emotes that you can get so that we can uh, really interact with players around the board when you're playing a live game. Um, on top of that, there is also a chat window, which of course isn't going to work for me right now because I'm playing just AI opponents. But if you're playing a game live against other opponents, you have the ability to talk with them on chat here. Um, so, to so WD targeting. I now have control of this hypersonic missile. I took the planet over that had the missile on it, so I get to use it, uh, which is quite nice. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and fire these two rockets here, try to take his population down, uh, and then we're going to leave the rest, because there's no reason to. So here we go. Firing. Two hits. Wow. I just eradicated my own population as well. But it is what it is. It keeps him from getting it. Okay, so now that I've got some war cruisers, I can actually mount population to them. And these guys have a lot of shields right now, so this is probably a good idea. Um, I imagine we're going to have a bit of a competition over this planet, over these planets. So I'm going to move some guys in for defense. Um, this war cruiser is going to come here. This war cruiser is going to go here with the two dark raiders to take this down. I guess we'll move this battle carrier here as well and these guys are going to move here for some blockage let's see what happens got a little bit of a fight between red and green uh this is probably going to go red's way because of the, the firepower yeah and here we go taking on another level three centaurian resistance hopefully i have enough cannons to make this a quick fight i do down goes the centaurians and my war cruiser with his 7 HP is still feeling okay. So, we're going to try to deploy to Ostro. We got lucky. This guy has taken a Kekko again. So, this is a part where shuffling population around kind of becomes a big deal. What I'm going to do, I think, is I don't care if... Uh, uh, oh. One thing worth noting is the last, very last conquest stage of the game, all of us got radar. This allows us to see invisible opponents. Nobody can be invisible for the last round. Okay, so what I think I want to do is I want to take my, my population off of Ostro that I just deployed. 
And I'm going to move it up to, because uh, I want to move that up to Lyra and take that planet. And then I'm going to take the war cruiser at Poseidon and move it back over to Ostro. Uh, this should allow, this should hopefully allow me to get eight points instead of four points off of this move. Um, and then the last thing I want to note is that the High Council Hex, whoever controls it, it's worth seven points at the end of the game instead of being worth the normal two. So we're going to go ahead and try to send our uh, some of our ships to secure that. And I think that a fighter is probably enough given what else is left on the board and how much people can move. Um, so what, because we've got our, our ships spread out here, we're going we're gonna to finish spreading them out so we can maximize the amount of points we get. Um, I'm not terribly worried about getting blown up, uh, so maybe we'll get in a fight, maybe we won't, I don't know. Let's just go spread out and see if we can maximize our points here. And boom, big movement at the end. We get a fight. I might be able to beat him because of his shields. It seems like it could be doubtful. If he doesn't blow me up this turn, we might be okay. Let's see, two hits. This might be a 50-50 kind of battle. And I got my second hit. Just one hit. That's it. We can get hit once. All right. Look at that. Collecting the points here for the end of the game. Two points for blowing him up. Now we've got nearly even matched. This is going to be a dice roll. Pun definitely intended. Oh, zero hits for him. That worked out for us. Only one hit. Come on. Here we go, two hits, we're both limping. We are both limping. Where was that roll last turn, huh? There he goes, let's see, zero hits on his five. No, no way that was gonna happen. So, because we both blew each other up, nobody gets any rewards. Last battle, I think. That fighter takes him down in one shot. Takes two hits of his own, battling around the High Council. And we're going to go ahead and try to deploy these last two population. We got them, and we move to the victory screen. Here we come. Zoom in as, as things move down. And we see the winning player. He's emoting. He's showing what's going on. We got 69 VP to our opponent's meager 11 and 13. And it was all thanks to our massive barrage of biochemical rockets. So... I hope that you enjoyed this video. We're going to go ahead and give ourselves a little cheer again. Woohoo. We won the game. Uh, we look forward to seeing you all playing Exodus, which is available on Steam come August 17th. Uh, I should note we are also having a live stream of the game on that, uh, that evening on Twitch. We're going to be playing uh, Beat the Devs against a couple people who have won our uh, giveaway of some copies of Exodus and the opportunity to play us on Beat the Dev. So if you haven't signed up for that, you should sign up now. I'm going to put a link in the comment section below about where you can find the giveaway. Um, I will see you all then and enjoy Exodus.